Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sean Dalton, and today we're going to be talking about 10 different food photography tips for beginner photographers. Tip number one. Find a good setting. So whether you're going to a cafe or a restaurant or a coffee shop, no matter where you're shooting food, even if it's in your home, make sure it's a good setting. Look for windows, natural light, uh, look at the tables, the walls, make sure that the paint's not too crazy, too many crazy colors. If you have orange paint, it's gonna reflect orange light onto your food. Make sure the setting's nice, there's props around and things you can pull from to add to your shot. Um, pay attention to just various aspects of that setting. Tip number two. You actually only need one light source in food photography, and that light source is the sun. There's no need to bring any external flashes or anything like that because natural light is the most beautiful, the most soft, and the best light to make your food look good. Tip number three, the light from the sun is the best in the mornings and in the late afternoon. So if you're gonna shoot food, shoot it within those time windows. It kind of depends on where you live, but make sure you're not shooting in the middle of the day because that's when the sun is really harsh and it's gonna cast a lot of shadows and your highlights are gonna be blown out in your food photos. So try to aim for either the morning or the afternoon. Tip number four, use diffusers and reflectors to move light around and manipulate it to make your food look better. If it's a cloudy day, that's perfect because the clouds are actually acting as a diffuser. If you don't have a really expensive reflector that you bought at the camera store, um, use a bed sheet or a piece of paper or anything pretty much that's white and transparent that the light can hit and diffuse so it's a little bit softer on your food. You're not getting really harsh shadows and really bright highlights that the sun creates in your images. Tip number five, focus on composition. While styling and lighting are super, super important, a lot of people overlook composition and how everything is laid out in the image. Go ahead and go on Google and type in basic photography composition terms. There's so much information online about them, you know, rule of thirds, rule of tenths, um, and, and so many more that can help you have a really attractive composition that'll make it easy for your viewer's eyes to navigate around the image and focus on what you want them to focus on. Tip number six, having a deep depth of field in your food photography really allows your food to stand out in comparison to the rest of the image. So there's two ways to achieve really good depth of field. First of all, using zoom lenses, so higher focal length lenses, uh, 55, 85, 100, or even beyond that. Um, and the second thing is having a low aperture. So 1.4, 1.8, 2.8, 4.0, I mean, kind of anything in the lower end of apertures the better. That will allow you to focus specifically on the food and have the rest of the image very blurry. And that's, we call that bokeh. Tip number seven, minimize clutter. If you have too many things going on in the photo, you won't be able to focus on the food. And that's the main subject here. I see so many photos on Instagram and Facebook where they have a phone, they have all kinds of stuff. And while that's good for lifestyle photography, for food photography, it's not. You wanna focus 100% on the food and only add things into your frame if it's completely relevant to the dish at hand. Tip number eight, move around and shoot from different angles. Don't get stuck shooting just from above or just from a 45 degree angle. Try different things, move the food around, uh, shoot from the side, shoot from above, do anything you can, just keep shooting, it doesn't matter. You can take a ton of pictures. We're in the digital age. You can take as many photos as you want and look at them later. Don't get stuck shooting in a few different ways. Be flexible, try new things, and you'll definitely get a good photography shot sooner or later. Tip number nine, Use different backgrounds on all of your images. If you're shooting a few different dishes at one restaurant, move them around into different places of the cafe or restaurant and shoot them with different backgrounds. If you have the same background in every image, it gets boring really quickly. So try different things, move things around and get a lot of variety in your images. Um, the album will look a lot better at the end of the day. Tip number 10, and probably the most important tip I can give you today, shoot every single day. No matter where you go, have your camera with you and take as many pictures as you can because that's the best way to get better. Every time you go to a restaurant or you're eating at home, just try to take some photos. After a while, you'll see what looks good. You'll find what works for you. You'll start to notice the lighting and the composition and the styling and everything that makes a good photograph. So shoot every day and I promise you will become a good photographer in time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I know all these tips are really quick, but I wanted to keep the video short. If you want to see a little bit more in depth about food photography or cafe photography in general, you can check out my Skillshare course. There's a link in the description. If you sign up through my link, it benefits me and you get a really sweet deal on Skillshare where there's like 15,000 courses um, and you can watch all of them for a dollar for three months. I mean, it's, it's such a crazy deal. So go ahead and do that. 
Um, and I'm also really interested to hear what you guys want to see. Um, just started getting, getting into creating a lot of content. So please leave me a comment in this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, and let me know what you think. If you like any more content, specific content, let me know and I'll do my best to make it for you. Um, with that said, thank you guys so much. My name is Sean Dalton and I can't wait to see you in the next video.